On a beautiful tropical island, a few chosen prisoners of the state are sent to Spiderhead, a state-of-the-art penitentiary. These prisoners get to live a comfortable life that includes their own rooms, a list of basic chores, a variety of hobbies, and the freedom to roam around the building in exchange for volunteering for a series of experiments researching chemicals that alter human emotions. Each participant has a small box of these chemicals called Moby Pack attached to their backs, and whenever they're about to be given a new dose, first they must give permission by saying acknowledge. All tests are overseen by genius leader Steve Abnesty and his assistant Mark. Today they're giving a dose of G46 to Ray, who begins laughing like crazy when Steve begins reading really silly jokes. Afterward, Mark begins reading depressing history facts, but the G46 chemical keeps Ray laughing. Steve considers this a success, and as he takes notes on his notebook, he adds a little gold star sticker. The next morning, prisoner Jeff is surprised to be taken out of the building blindfolded for a special test. They give him a dose of N40 before removing the blindfold, and now Jeff sees everything in front of him as beautiful. Jeff doesn't know how to describe it properly, so they also give him a dose of B15 to make him verbose. Now Jeff can describe the gorgeous view with poetic words from the heart, but once they're done and the group leaves, it's revealed Jeff had actually been looking at a nasty contaminated area. When Jeff returns to the facility, he goes to the kitchen to join Lizzie, a fellow prisoner he has a crush on. They're both in charge of the snacks chore, which works perfectly for them because it allows them to chat, bond, and share their experience with the tests while they cook. In the evenings, Jeff likes to spend time in his room drawing incredibly detailed art on an Etch-a-Sketch. This isn't always a good idea because it allows his mind to wander back to the incident that landed him in jail. That night, at a party with his best friend Adam and his girlfriend Emma, Jeff drank too much. Afterward, he and Adam got in a car while intoxicated, and Jeff drove the car into a tree, killing his best friend in the process. For the next test, Jeff is paired up with prisoner Heather. Steve double-checks they had never interacted before and asks if they find each other attractive, to which they answer with only mild interest. However, after Mark gives them a dose of N40, Jeff and Heather start seeing each other as incredibly gorgeous, and they can't stop themselves from getting busy right there in front of the cameras and scientists. When they're done, the couple cuddles and even tells each other I love you. Steve and Mark celebrate the success of N40, but Steve isn't ready to put down a gold star yet because he wants to study the residual effect first. Later, when Jeff goes around serving food, he brings some to Heather and things are awkward between them. They don't even speak to each other, so there's no residual love like Steve wanted. That doesn't stop him from repeating the experiment though, and this time, Jeff is paired up with Sarah. She's an older woman that Jeff isn't into at all, but he receives a double dose of N40 and once again, Jeff can't stop himself from getting busy with her. Later, while Mark refills the bottles in Jeff's Moby pack, he asks him to be careful while he gets busy with the girls because the little box is delicate, so even the slightest bump could break it and cause them to lose control. Jeff takes the chance to ask Mark to change him to another chore instead of snacks, claiming he needs a change but clearly having a secret reason for it. The following day, Jeff is surprised to join Steve and Mark at the scientist's desk for the next experiment. There are two rooms today, in one, there's Dave, who keeps eating humongous amounts of food, only stopping to throw up. In the other room, Jeff finds Heather and Sarah. The test is simple, Steve wants Jeff to choose one and give her a dose of darkened flocks, which Steve classifies as an agitator that leaves no permanent damage. Jeff feels uncomfortable with this decision and refuses to choose, but he clarifies that if he had two, it would be a random choice. He has no particular feelings for either of them, and he's only refusing because he had been given that chemical before, so he remembers how much he hated it. This is fascinating to Steve, because Jeff had been under different doses when he got together with them, yet the final feelings are still the same. Sometime later, Lizzie approaches Jeff to try to ask about his decision to change chores. However, their conversation is interrupted by the guards, who remind Jeff that today is his free day. Jeff is allowed to leave the facility for a walk and to call Emma, but as usual, he's sent directly to voicemail. He leaves a message apologizing and saying that he misses her, like he always does, but this time, Jeff also tells her about Lizzie. For the next experiment, Jeff is paired up with Rogan, a huge burly man with an aggressive attitude. Jeff has no interest in men and is worried that they'll make him get busy with Rogan, so he refuses to acknowledge any dose, but absolutely nothing happens and they're allowed to leave after a few minutes. It's not hard to put two and two together, thus Jeff rushes to the scientist's room to confirm his suspicions. Heather had been asked to give darkened flocks to Jeff or Rogan, and she chose neither. This also means Heather got busy with Rogan during one of these tests. Furious, Jeff wants to know if everyone is getting together with everyone, and Steve shows him a chart mapping all the connections among the prisoners. Steve explains it's an experimental design mandated by the protocol committee, and he isn't a big fan of it either. When Jeff expresses how uncomfortable he is with the lines this testing is crossing, Steve reminds him he was the one that volunteered, and the alternative is life in an awful state jail surrounded by power-hungry cops. Not wanting to lose the privileges he has here, Jeff apologizes and returns for another test with Rogan. Fortunately, Sarah doesn't give the darkened flocks to any of them either. 
After the test is done, Steve thinks they'll be ready to give it a gold star soon, but Mark is starting to feel uncomfortable with it as well. Steve reminds him this is necessary work in order to make the world a better place, and Mark leaves for his weekend out in a better mood. Later in the evening, Steve gives himself a dose of N42. The prisoners don't know this, but he has a Moby pack on his back as well. Meanwhile, Jeff and Lizzie are having dinner together while Jeff explains how awful Dark and Flocks makes you feel. Lizzie takes his hand and asks why Jeff changed chores. Jeff tells her this place messes with his head and sometimes he forgets who he used to be before coming here, but when he's with her, he really feels like himself. The next Monday, Steve decides to take the risk and asks Mark to give him a triple dose of the chemicals. Jeff comes over for today's test and catches them on the act, and since the scientists quickly put everything away, Jeff doesn't comment on it. For the next experiment, Steve tells Jeff that the committee has ordered them to continue with the Dark and Flocks testing, so Jeff has no choice but to give Heather a dose. Because he's under the effects of the chemicals, Steve is more aggressive with his techniques, reminding a hesitant Jeff that Heather is a prisoner because she's done some awful things in the past and that at least they've chosen him to do this instead of Rogan. Jeff still refuses to do it and begs Steve to talk to the committee to change their minds. Steve leaves the room, pretending to go to call the committee, but actually, he goes to the kitchen to grab some coffee and chat with Lizzie for a while. When he returns, Steve lies to Jeff, saying the committee refuses to change their minds and Jeff must proceed with the experiment if he doesn't want to get kicked out of the program. Seeing as he has no other choice, Jeff accepts to give Dark and Flocks to Heather, who immediately begins feeling excruciating pain. Mark also gives Jeff B15 to make him verbose, now Jeff has to describe all the ways Heather is panicking, how guilty it makes him feel, and how he still doesn't love her. In her panicked flailing, Heather bumps her back against the wall and breaks the Moby pack, causing the Darken flocks to flood her. Heather gets awfully violent, to the point where she breaks a vase and uses the pieces to end it all before Mark can get there to stop her. Steve runs out of the room to check on her and drops his keys in the process, so while he and Mark argue about what happened, Jeff takes the chance to do some snooping. With the keys, Jeff gains access to Steve's notebook and finds many interesting things. First, there's a chemical formula called OBDX on a piece of paper with the Amnesty Pharmaceuticals logo at the top, this means there is no committee, Steve is the owner and boss of a private operation. Next, Jeff finds a bingo card full covered with gold stars except for two numbers, 6 and 40. By peeking under the stars, he realizes the numbers match all the different chemicals they've been testing. N40 doesn't have a star yet because it hasn't achieved true love, and B6 is what Mark refills in everyone's Moby Pox. Before he can look any further into it, Jeff notices Steve is coming back and puts everything away, throwing the keys back on the floor not to be discovered. Later, Mark asks Steve to report this, but Steve refuses. Reporting the incident will only get them shut down, and they already crossed the line a long time ago, which means it's too late to give up. Afterward, Steve goes to see Jeff, but not even the most prepared speech can make him feel better, so Steve goes for another tactic by sharing the chemical they had tested on Ray. Both men enter a laughing fit they can't get out of, not even when Steve suddenly shares he was abandoned by his father as a child. Jeff wonders why Steve never leaves the facility like Mark does, and Steve answers he can't because this project is his one true love. The next experiment is for Lizzie, who is given a chemical that makes her extremely phobic and she panics at the sight of a mere stapler. Afterward, she shares her trauma and shame with Jeff. He understands that shame, and confesses that's the real reason he has to change chores. Lizzie doesn't understand why they keep saying yes just for a few luxuries, so Jeff explains he thinks he deserves it and tells her the whole story of the incident. That night many months ago, Jeff's drunk driving not only killed Adam, it killed Emma as well. Since then, he's been consumed by guilt. Lizzie comforts Jeff and the pair finally kisses. Later, Jeff finds them having a snack together in the kitchen and a plan begins forming in his head. When he looks at the security footage and sees Jeff has been sketching Lizzie, Steve confirms he's on the right track and goes to bed after dosing himself with N40 again. The next day, Steve calls Jeff over for one more test, he has to give Dark and Flocks to Lizzie. Jeff refuses and Steve allows him to leave without doing anything for now. As soon as Jeff is gone, Steve orders Mark to double his dose of B6. However when Mark arrives at the room, Jeff confronts him with the truth, he knows there's no committee and B6 isn't a placebo, whatever it is, that's the only chemical Steve truly cares about. Mark explains he wanted to work with a real genius and he had been promised to change the world, but he started to get regrets now too. Jeff notices this and together they make a plan before Mark leaves for the weekend. The following Monday, it's only Steve and Jeff in the testing room because Mark's sick at home. Jeff is given the control to dose Lizzie with Dark and Flocks, but he still refuses to do it, which makes Steve furious. Unable to understand how these two could love each other after a few months locked inside a facility, Steve tries to change Jeff's mind by ordering Lizzie to confess her crime, she forgot her daughter in her car and the baby died. Lizzie breaks down in tears, asking Jeff for the chemicals, and Jeff presses the screen of the control. However, it's Steve the one that starts laughing. 
Mark lied about being sick and changed the programming so the control could dose Steve. He also put extra doses of B6 in Steve's Moby pack. Jeff put Steve through the fear chemical before giving him darkened flocks. As Steve thrashes in pain, Jeff explains Mark is coming with the police and that he knows what the real experiment is. B6 is a compliance chemical, designed to make people do whatever you want. OBDX stands for OBDX, an obvious pun on obedience. Even while in pain, Steve thinks B6 could be used for the greater good. The only reason why testing hasn't been completed yet is that obedience hasn't been absolute, meaning it still hasn't been able to overpower the subject's deepest feelings. Steve also confesses both Jeff and Lizzie had already finished their sentence days ago and never told them. Angry, Jeff pushes Steve's head on the table and forces him to use his fingerprint on the control to open the front door, that way he can escape and tell the world about Heather's death. On his way out, Jeff notices Steve taking out a knife and orders him to give it to him. However, Steve is able to ignore the direct order even while on the effects of the extra B6 dose. The chemical isn't strong enough to overpower real feelings, and like Steve told Jeff the other day, this project is his one true love, so he'll defend it with his life. Steve hits Jeff and steals the control to give Lizzie four doses of darkened Phlox, which immediately makes her go crazy. Jeff attacks Steve, making him drop and break the control in the ensuing fight, but by pushing him against the wall he also breaks Steve's Moby pack. The sudden rush of chemicals weakens Steve, giving Jeff the chance to push him away, steal the keys and run to check on Lizzie. Fortunately, it isn't too late, Jeff helps her to breathe again, and he also uses the keys to open her Moby pack and remove all the chemical bottles. Lizzie apologizes for not confessing her crime before, but Jeff tells her not to worry because he still loves her. The duo gets ready to escape the facility, so Steve makes an announcement, if the other prisoners don't want to lose their privileges, they must stop Jeff and Lizzie. Steve also sees on the security cameras that the police are approaching the building, so he grabs as many vials of the chemicals as he can and leaves as well. On their way out, Jeff and Lizzie use teamwork to fight off Sarah and Ray. Dave tries to stop them too, but Lizzie easily avoids a confrontation by giving him the keys to the pantry. The rest of the prisoners are also coming after them as a herd, but the duo runs faster and manages to reach the final hallway, locking the door behind them and leaving the herd on the other side. By the time they make it outside, Steve is already leaving on his private plane, so they grab a motorboat and leave as well. Mark is with the cops in their boats and watches Steve fly away, but thankfully, he doesn't have anything to worry about. The N-40 has taken over Steve's mind, so he can only see a gorgeous sight ahead of him instead of a mountain, causing him to crash the plane against it. Jeff and Lizzie also see the explosion and laugh at the irony as Jeff reaches the most logical conclusion, there's no chemical for self-forgiveness, it's something humans must achieve by themselves. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.